Good morning, everyone. Well, Syria was dominating the market as there was talk about the Western powers bombing the country in retaliation for President Assad's use of chemical weapons. Uh, oil prices spiked sharply higher. There was a flight to safety in currencies, with the dollar yen in particular falling sharply, and dollar Swissy also falling. Although the dollar is mixed against the G10 currencies, it gained against virtually all of the emerging market currencies, particularly those that import oil, such as the Indian rupee. However, the Indonesian rupiah also fell, even though Indonesia is a member of OPEC, uh, as did the Mexican peso. So this was clearly more of a risk-off move than simply looking at oil importers versus exporters. Now, what happens to currencies when the oil price spikes? I looked back at the last period of rising oil prices, January to July of 2008, uh, when WTI peaked out at 142 barrels a, uh, dollars a barrel. Then the main winners were the Brazilian real, the Swiss franc, Australian dollar, the euro, and the Danish kroner, uh, in that order. While the losers were the South African rand, Korean won, Canadian dollar, very strange since Canada is an oil exporter, New Zealand dollar, and the British pound. In fact, yesterday uh, the Brazilian real was one of the few emerging market currencies to gain against the, the U.S. dollar. The difference between the 2008 experience and now, though, is that the former rise in prices was due to higher demand, while the current spike is due to a disruption of supply. This means it makes it very different in their, their impact on the world. I think the currencies that lose out from higher oil prices may well be similar in both prices, periods because higher prices impact them in the same way either way. But those that gain are likely to be a different bunch because of the different underlying cause for the spike. Now, the Swiss franc is likely to remain among the winners, I think. Uh, the dollar should benefit more this time as U.S. oil production has risen considerably since 2008. Uh, plus, of course, when oil prices are higher, other countries have to buy more dollars to pay for their oil. The euro may, way, may once again benefit from petroleum exporting countries diversifying their receipts. Uh, the yen may gain from some flight to safety flows, as we saw yesterday, but uh, Japan has become much more sensitive to oil prices since the, uh, the 2011 earthquake because its nuclear reactors are all shut down. So it may be more vulnerable to higher oil prices than it was before. Now, just for today, uh, the focus besides uh, Syria and oil prices will be on the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney's first speech. Uh, he's expected to defend his commitment to keep interest rates steady until UK unemployment comes down to 7% under the bank's uh, new forward guidance. Sterling has weakened over the last couple of days in anticipation of this speech, so there could be a sell the rumor, buy the fact reaction afterwards if he isn't convincing enough. On the other hand, if he does manage to convince people that he's really serious about keeping rates low for long, uh, Sterling could weaken further. Technically, the pair is lying above the trend line, and a return above 155.69 might indicate the end of the correction we've been experience, experiencing since August 21st. However, the MACD oscillator remains in bearish territory uh, below the zero line, telling us to be careful if a break below the trend line and the 143.31 level occurs. This is Marshall Gittler, head of Global FX Strategy, Dynamics, wishing you solid trading.